This video is sponsored by ASUS. What's going on guys? I am back from Portugal. I feel like I'm brand new. 10 days away was definitely freaking worth it. Now I'm heading to the office because John and I need to finish our next desk setup makeover video. This one is for gamers and streamers. I'm super excited to show you guys. Today, I'm gonna show you the accessories that I'm sort of bringing into that desk setup. And we'll, I really wanna show you what I have because it is absolutely freaking amazing. And I've noticed that in these desk setup makeover episodes, I don't really have the time to really go over the accessories, but I'm gonna go over them. Most, most of them are gonna make it into that episode. But anyways, we'll talk about it today. So enjoy the episode. By the way, best freaking little camera to have with you. Absolutely amazing. This is what I'm shooting with right now. I've been back into gaming a bit it of course always involves valorant my main account actually got banned a few months ago and so i'm back to playing on a new one there are some new racing games coming up i'd like to try but but th this isn't about me it's about finding the right gaming accessories that will make our upcoming gaming desk setup makeover perfect for gamers and upcoming streamers which is why it always starts with a proper keyboard this here's another mode sonnet but this time around with custom keycaps these are actually gmk keycaps from a collection called gmk redacted for those who don't know what gmk is basically they are abs keycaps with a cherry profile so this means they tend to be softer plastic with a short keycap profile feel that is made with an aggressive angle for typing and gaming these tend to be thicker heavier dense they produce a higher pitch sound compared to pbt and their surface wears a tiny bit quicker compared to other keycaps meaning that eventually they tend to shine but they are double shot so the whole keycap surface does wear at the same rate look it's a whole hype yes they are more unique can last a bit longer in other aspects sound better feel nicer adding to the hype are things like the amount of designs there are out there and their compatibility with boards a board like the mode sonnet this build here was made with an aluminum white top with a brushed copper accent and copper bottom inside the hot swappable pcb does sit on a copper plate with a plate foam and a gray silicon base the internal copper wave weight we went for makes the keyboard sound slightly fuller it's a super nice setup that weighs a ton which is why we paired this with a lightweight gaming mouse this year quickly became my favorite gaming mouse the asus rog harp is actually a really accurate mouse in fact they marketed this with a cpi deviation of less than one percent cpi deviation is just the relationship between your physical movement on the mat and the physical movement in game on screen not all mice have the same cpi deviation and it's only really relevant if you're the type to change mice often i just think it's pretty freaking awesome to see such an accurate mouse this here is a solid shell that weighs around 54 grams it's really a complete mouse in regards of its physical functionality so it has three modes bluetooth a 2.4 gigahertz connection or the wired mode it's able to store its physical dongle within its body for better transportation has a dpi button and a pair button the ability to change its ptfe feet which i did and it actually came with these rubberized stickers for better grip which i also installed the mouse sits great on your hand feels complete and a tad longer compared to other gaming mice it's not the first time i featured this on the channel i've been actually really happy with it which is why I've been wanting a serious mousepad to slide this on. So I took Optimum's deck recommendation and I got the Artisan Zero made in Japan and imported from Japan. These are not easy to get by the way. They are extremely popular and with reason because they feel incredibly nice. Holy cow, I've never felt a gaming mouse pad like this before. It's really soft, sliding the mouse on it feels like I'm gliding across its surface. It's made out of polyester, it's a non-slip pad, it's freaking great and a lot of people call this the best mouse pad in the industry. I did go with the soft version and not the extra soft. This here is also a 490mm mouse pad by 420mm and 4mm in height. 
On the complete opposite side of my Artisan Zero sits the Audio-Technica AT2040. This here seems to be a direct competitor to the Rode PodMic, although some people prefer it because it has better dynamic range. What I like about this is that it's a mic that isolates your voice quite well. I've used the PodMic in the past and I do find that it tends to pick up room noise a lot easier. The voice on the AT2040 sounds more clean and full in my opinion and it's why I think it deserves to be recommended especially because of its price and because it's an XLR microphone. The build quality is nice, it's mainly made out of metal except for its plastic bracket. It is a hypercardiodynamic mic, so these tend to be good for music and film recording. This means that it has a tighter pickup angle and offers more side rejection than a cardioid pattern. It really does a good job at rejecting side noise. A lot of broadcasters and gamers like this setup and with reason. It's not the bassiest microphone at all though, the frequency range for bass is typically between 60 to 250 hertz. This here delivers a range of 80 hertz to 1600 hertz, so there will be some bass missing. But other than that, I think it's a solid pick, especially if you pair this with a nice aesthetically pleasing boom arm. This here is the NZXT boom arm and to be honest, I picked this because it's simple and it has a nice cable compartment to nicely route your XLR cable. It does feel a bit cheap if I was to compare this to the blue compass but I do find it easier to manipulate. It feels capable flexible and easy to operate. It supports up to 2.6 pounds. You can get up to 31.5 inches in maximum horizontal reach and 32 and a half inches in maximum vertical reach. It's really not bad and does the job. This Audio-Technica AT2040 connects to my favorite sound interface, the Audient Evo 4. I keep recommending this thing to gamers, but it's because I can't find anything that's remotely close to it in terms of functionality. This audio interface really makes gaming and streaming super easy for you. The interface packs up two Evo mic preamps that can set their own levels with their smart game feature. Both also have individual 48 volt phantom power controls and the ability to cycle through them with these channel buttons. The amp also delivers an instrument input along a headphone jack and two speaker outputs for connecting powered monitors. That headphone jack also automatically mutes the monitor speakers when they are plugged in. The interface connects through USB-C, but you do need to make sure you install the drivers to make sure everything works as it should, especially if you want to stream with it. All the functionality of the Evo 4 can be controlled on the top of the unit. The main knob when paired with the right buttons allow you to control your devices as you wish, whether that's controlling the desired channels, adjusting its gain, mixing between your voice and the in-game sound within your headphones, mute your desired input, heck, it even allows you to further customize your headphones by panning your inputs left and right by holding the monitor mix button and rotating the main knob. I did avoid getting headphones this time around and I decided to give the 7Hz Timeless a try. I've never used Planner IEMs before but I've been wanting to give this technology a try, mainly because of its wider sound stage and outstanding clarity so they are said to be great for gaming. Planner sound by the way is just created by Planner magnetic drivers. The benefits of such technology is that it can deliver better bass and generally more accurate sound. If you guys follow the world of audio, you know that the 7Hz Timeless are literally a revolutionary IEM. Currently, they are pretty hyped up and for $200, I think they are worth the hype. These came in this industrial light case with a wide assortment of silicon tips. Physically, the buds are actually pretty freaking sick. The cable is super well made, feels supple and soft, the material on the hardware feels great, and it features an MMCX connector on the top of the body. A plastic body with a circular aluminum faceplate that sits perfectly flush against my ears. As someone that's not a professional audiophile, I do hear the difference in sound. They sound really nice to me and the one true thing that stood out to me was the detail and clarity of the bass. The mids are great, like anything between 200 and 2000 hertz sounds natural and organic. The bass, the mids and the sound stage is really something that I was able to point out as someone that is not a professional audiophile. I'm also not a professional gamer and I know many of you are hobbyists, which is why I think I've got the perfect well-balanced PC for you. A PC that pretty much powers all of the peripherals that currently sit on this desk. 
ROG recently made a 10 liter small form factor PC. It has easy access with a tool free design and can be packed up with incredible specs. It's actually just as big as a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X, except with a lot more power. We are talking about a system that packs up an RTX 4070 with an i9 13900KF and 32 gigabytes of RAM, all while being incredibly small portable and aesthetically pleasing, like this thing doesn't scream gaming at all, especially because with an armory crate you can shut down or tweak these colors. Look, I know Asus are the sponsor of this video and they sent this over, but ever since they've been developing really cool products, I've been asking them to send things over a lot more often, and their G22 along their ROG ally is no exception. Like if you open this up you see how much work went into designing a system like this, this little aluminum chassis has the power of a full-blown gaming desktop that can play AAA games, handle complex renders, architect programs, programming, all with ease but looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing and hides in a desk setup extremely well. That also means that it's perfect as a living room multi-purpose device, almost looking like a console in your media unit. You can use it to stream, play, watch movies, and even work on a big TV if you wish. Because it is a pre-built, you don't need to spend hours trying to learn how to build a system or worse, troubleshooting your custom build because it won't turn on. Trust me, it happens to me all the time. This is a system that's simply a plug and play device and Asus really makes sure that you rest assured that all of the internal components have been tuned to work the best already. The system has insanely good IO on the front and all of the ports you need within the motherboard as well as the GPU. Heck, they even designed the panels of this thing to be super easy to take off, to the point that changing the right side panel takes a few minutes to do. I do wish I had time because other than gaming and coding web and mobile apps, I would love to learn how to code Unity games. On a PC like this, it will make rendering your own scenes and writing code so nice. I have found really good tutorials online to do so, I've got Unity installed on this machine but it's just something I have no time for. I do treat this almost like a primary machine since it mimics the exact same workflow I have on my custom build so just in case things go south like they've been going with my main build I'll definitely bring this one home. I am thinking that this could make a great Windows setup machine to have in my condo setup or maybe if you have a smaller living space if that's something that maybe interests you and you're looking to have a minimal workstation at home I'll leave some links down below. I really think this is a machine that's incredibly worth checking out. Other than my harp, this mode sounded on our whole audio setup connected to this we've also got the Elite Series 2 Xbox controller. Now some games are undoubtedly impossible to play on a mouse and a keyboard which is why I prefer having a controller with me just in case. I actually decided to finally give the Xbox Elite controller a try. Ever since this thing came out I've always wanted to try one. When I unboxed this I was genuinely surprised. The carrying case is sturdy, it's the perfect compact size to travel with and includes all of the accessories you need to enjoy your controller, including this massive braided USB-A to USB-C cord. This comes with a charging dock which means you can rest this on your desk setup while it charges, a tension key to tighten your joysticks, customizable joysticks too, different d-pads, paddles that can be used to shift in cars, it's actually really cool. If you download the Xbox accessories app in the Windows Store, you can really modify all of its inputs. You can create profiles to remap your keys, adjust the sticks, modify the triggers, behaviors, its vibration and color. If you ask me, it's actually a pretty solid controller overall, especially since the build quality reflects the price. It has this rubberized textured grip, what feels like metal on top is actually plastic, it feels heavy, and it's completely blacked out. This does have a profile change button that allows you to cycle your profiles, and all of the buttons in here feels extremely nice when they get clicked. Since this controller is on the darker side, I do think adding some light on your setups is a must, which is why I recommend you guys give the Elgato key light a try. I've previously used this on my setups and I absolutely love it. The key light is not only a great way to add lighting to your setup but to your face as well. The cool thing is that it's software controlled through PC, Mac, your phone or even your stream deck. It's super easy to set up on your desk, the clamp really makes things look super aesthetically pleasing and the ball head makes 
makes the panel easy to manipulate. With Elgato's control center, you can adjust the temperature of the light and adjust its brightness, which makes things super easy to control while streaming, but I do think the streaming deck is a better alternative to do so. So this is Elgato's Streaming Deck Plus, it features some new components that we've never seen before under previous models, this digital LCD screen and these four rotating dials for adjustments. Like always, we've got these little LCD buttons that can be customized of course, I use the LCD screen to modify the key light's temperature as well as its brightness, you can of course adjust the volume of your devices here and even the system volume if you wish. These rotating encoders are clickable and depending on the way you assign them, they offer different functions. The plugins really allow you to discover a whole variety of assignments you can use for different software. The same thing goes with its buttons and the things you can display on them. There are a lot of things you can do with this and it really introduces a new way for you to automate your streaming and gaming experience. What I did to complete this setup is that I paired this streaming space with a ZV-E1 mirrorless camera from Sony. Now there is a bit of an issue with this camera if you want to use it like so. However, there are some workarounds. Luckily, you don't need Elgato's Camera Link 4K adapter to get this thing to work. You actually just connect it via USB-C and it'll recognize it as a webcam instantly. You do need to enable some settings before doing so like adjusting your output rest frame rate in the streaming panel and setting up your USB connection mode to USB streaming. Then you can connect your camera and within Streamlabs you can look for your video source to set up a video capture device. Just make sure you check the use custom audio device if you wish to use your mic. If you don't end up doing that, you'll have your built-in camera mic overriding your Audio-Technica microphone. So yeah, you can really change all sorts of things while you're streaming, as long as they are within your FN panel things are super easy to set up. You can use the active stabilization to zoom in or maybe the rocker instead, change the ISO, the aperture, shutter speed, white balance, all of the settings that really allow you to get an incredible image out of the box for your stream. But there's a major drawback and that's overheating and battery life. In two hours, this thing will overheat and shut itself off. And if it doesn't, the battery will only last you four hours even though it's plugged in. So yeah, for a $3,000 camera, it's not my biggest recommendation, especially if you're looking to only stream with it. This is an overall camera to be used for creating gaming tech content and occasionally doing shorter streams. So yeah, these are our latest gaming accessories that are super worth checking out. They are definitely on the premium side, but I always say you get what you pay for. If you are serious about streaming, I recommend getting the proper tech that can last you for a while. It's always best to do so in order to avoid double spending your money. Stay tuned for our streamer death setup makeover episode next week. Most of these items will be featured in there. So maybe it'll give you an idea on how to set up your own space. Let me know down below what you think. I'll see you all soon. Take care.